This little video is what I call tool time, where I talk about some of my favorite tools and tools that I recommend that you have in your workroom. So let's get started. We will begin with pressing tools because pressing is next to godliness. You can save bad sewing with good pressing and you can ruin good sewing with bad pressing. Here are some of the more commonplace tools that you really should have. I will discuss them each separately. Two tools that I feel really are essential are first the pressing ham and the sleeve board. Now looking at the sleeve board, it is used as it the name implies for pressing seams open on sleeves. It has two different surfaces. One is wider, one is narrower, covered in muslin. And so whenever you're pressing any sort of cylindrical object or garment, this helps you tremendously. This here is the pressing ham. Now the pressing hams come in different configurations. This being one and this one being a different shape. The pressing ham is best for pressing darts or anything that has a contour. I like this particular shape for pressing collars because this shape really echoes the neck. Now, the reason I'm showing these two together is that if you need a stand for your pressing ham, there you have it. So two tools don't do without these. These next two tools are what I call seam rolls. When you're pressing a surface, it's good to have a convex curve, the iron, when you're pressing a seam, the iron will sit right on top. This prevents you from embossing the seam allowances in the surrounding fabric on the garment. Now this one here, this is a railing. It's called plowed railing. I made these myself. And I have one covered in muslin for smooth fabrics. I also have one covered in flannel for wool fabrics. Now the reason I have these next to the sleeve board is that again if you're pressing a sleeve, if you're pressing a seam on a sleeve, you prop this up, you slip the sleeve over, you can press it, or any seam really. It keeps everything that you don't want to press out of the way. Now a, another workaround is a wooden dowel. And whenever you're working, when, whenever you're making tools, you want to work with hardwood rather than soft wood. Hardwood is more rigid. It doesn't flatten out over time. And also the other thing to think about when you're making pressing tools, because some of these you make, is that natural fibers, wood, cotton, that sort of thing, are better because when you're pressing, the idea is that you put the heat and the moisture into the fabric and then the tool should draw it out. So heating it up with the moisture creates the press, letting it cool and dry sets the press. So all of these tools here allow you to do that. These next two tools are variations on a theme. This is what's called a point presser. And you can see here, this profile enables you to get into all sorts of tight spaces so that you can press seams open on, say, collar points, for example. Now, this one here has different surfaces so that you can press different shaped seams along here. So this is one version of the point presser. This one here is a combination point presser 
and what's called a clapper. Now this little projection here is something I added because I make Barbie clothes and I like to press the seams open on little tiny Barbie sleeves. Normally it comes without this. The point presser on this tool, again, it has this surface so you can press open seams in tight corners and it has a block on the bottom. You will also see just the block. What this does, there are times you don't want to put the iron down on the fabric, so you will steam the fabric, say a, a, a lapel, and then you put this down onto the surface of the fabric. So it will help to pull away the moisture and dry everything without the risk of leaving shine from the iron on the particular thing you're pressing. So with the issue of shine, there's also a pressing cloth. People use different kinds of pressing cloths. This is just a square of silk organza. What I like about this is that I can see through it, so I know I'm not pressing any creases in where they're not needed. And a pressing cloth, whenever you're in doubt, use a pressing cloth. This keeps the iron from creating shine on the fabric. Now we move on to cutting tools. This may not seem like a cutting tool, this particular ruler. It's a fairly thick plexiglass ruler. If you're going to be using the rotary cutters, which I'll talk about in a moment, it's better to have something like this with a hard edge rather than the thinner gridded rulers because you can easily cut through the edge on the gridded ruler. This will resist that. So with the rotary cutters, Ulfa is the one of the brands. There are other brands. There are different types. This one has a guard. You can see it has the guard that you push back up. There are other types which I don't have where you have you can squeeze the handle and the guard will retract. Rotary cutters are exceedingly sharp. They're dangerous. So what I would say is if you've never used one, get the one with the handle because you always want the guard in place. You never want to leave it open. If you set it down, it should always be closed. Buy these blades in bulk. They will be your best friend. Now, a related tool is the pinked blade. It has a wavy profile. And while I sometimes use pinking shears on things, what I have found is that it's unpredictable as to whether the shears are going to chew or they're going to cut. This particular blade cuts. One thing to keep in mind is that when you're cutting, make sure that the blade is perpendicular to the cutting mat. If you're tilted one way or the other, you're going to have skips. From here, you want a pair of dressmaker's shears. Now you can see here, this is by Ginger. What I would say to you is get yourself two pairs of this one and the other one, which I'll talk about in a moment, and send them back to Ginger to have them sharpened. Do not let anyone else sharpen them. I've seen too many people who come to me with a pair of Ginger scissors that's, that choose the fabric, and it is because they had them sharpened somewhere else. And finally, so this is this is just a dressmaker shear. This is just a general purpose shear, but this one is my absolute favorite. This one, again, is by Ginger. And this is what's called a Craft 5C, a Taylor Point scissor. What I love about these particular scissors, there is a thick spine on the blades and the fulcrum is fairly close to the point. So you have a lot of leverage and control and you can cut through lots of thicknesses. And since the spine strengthens the blade, the blades will not separate like this if you're trying to cut through thicknesses. Now, the other thing to know about this is there's what's called, there's a knife edge. You have a, a big distance between here and here. And then there is a bevel edge. You can see this one is narrower. 
Now the trick here is when you're cutting, say if you're opening up a welt pocket, you can put the point of the knife edge in to make enough of a slit, then you turn the scissor over and have the bevel edge down and you're less likely to cut through something you don't want to. Again, buy two pairs of these so that when you need to get them sharpened, you have one in reserve while the others are being sharpened. But again, I'm going to say it, don't have them sharpened anywhere else but Ginger. Cutting tools will be your best friend. Now we have pins and needles. Now this is not a place to cheap out, really. But some people would say I'm cheaping out by using these debates rage. Um, this is the Dritz quilting pins. I like them because they're long and they're fairly robust. So for most of the work that I do, where I don't have to worry about pins leaving a mark, this is the pin I choose. They're inexpensive, so you can afford to replace them repeatedly. They're easily, uh, they're easily purchased. And here, if I'm working with fine fabrics, silks, charmeuse, organza, anything where I'm really worried about leaving the pinhole in the fabric, these are fine silk pins. Um, there are many places you can get them, but it's good to have some of these. I don't use these as often. They're not as robust, but there are times you need them. And finally, needles. Don't cheap out on your needles. These, you can see, are by Clover. Gold Eye, they're called milliner's needles. Now, milliner's needles are a little longer than other needles. There are different kinds of needles. I have found that milliner's needles work best for my hand because they are long. Don't cheap out. If your needle seems like it's resisting the fabric, you throw your needle away. This is like a machine needle. Change them frequently. And finally, marking tools. It's just good to have a range of marking tools to mark your fabric with. This is the friction pen. It disappears with heat. I generally don't use these on the face of the fabric. I will use them on the back, but it's good to have something that if you just heat it up a little bit, disappears. Now, something also that disappears with heat, this particular chalk. Perfection Master Crayons Disappearing Chalk. They have two brands. The quick one disappears in 72 hours. The slow disappears in 168 hours, depending on humidity. This is like a clay chalk. It works like a clay chalk, but if you hit it with just a little tiny bit of steam, it will disappear immediately. So you don't have to worry about getting the marks out of the fabric. So what I would say about using chalk, if you're using any chalk, use white whenever possible. Because if you use a colored chalk on a white or a gray or something like that, it's almost impossible to get it out. You'll just have to get the dry cleaners. So another device is called the chalk wheel. You can see I've used this quite a lot. It has a little tiny gear in there and it leaves a fine line of chalk on whatever you want to mark. Clover makes these, they come in different configurations, but a chalk wheel, if you want a fine, accurate line like that, is the, the way to go. But again, it comes in white, blue, red, and yellow, but don't use colors unless you absolutely have to. This then, if you need to get the chalk out of the fabric, this is a stencil brush. You can see here, the bristles, it's, they're packed close together and this is a very flat surface. This particular brush gets chalk out of anything. I'm amazed, unless of course you're using color on gray, but it gets chalk out of just about anything. Notice though, that I've covered the metal fitting with some fabric. That is because if you don't do that, you might snag your fabric with the metal fitting. There's always a rough edge somewhere that will catch when you least expect it. So, 
giving you a little range of tools to work with. And with these, you'll have a lot of success.